ACE inhibitors are a class of antihypertensive drugs that are used to treat high blood pressure. They are most commonly indicated in the treatment of cardiovascular and renal diseases, including heart failure, acute coronary syndrome, nephrotic syndrome, and hypertension. To understand how ACE inhibitors work to lower blood pressure, we need to understand the action of angiotensin converting enzyme. First of all, we need to understand the RAS system, or the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. We have made a separate video on the physiology of the RAS system. You can watch it right now or after the end of this chapter. Here is a short decryption of RAS system and its effect on blood pressure. First, the juxtaglomerular or JG cells, which are present in the kidney, secrete renin into the blood. Once renin has been released into the bloodstream, it can act on its target, angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen is produced in the liver and is found continuously circulating in the plasma. Renin then acts to cleave angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. But this angiotensin 1 is still physiologically inactive, but it acts as a precursor for angiotensin 2. This angiotensin 2, which acts as the main character in the story, is very crucial for the increase of blood pressure in certain circumstances. Angiotensin II also acts on the adrenal cortex, specifically the zona glomerulosa. Here, it stimulates the release of aldosterone. These three hormones, renin, angiotensin, and aldosterone, form the RAS system. The renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system acts to manage blood volume and arteriolar tone on a long-term basis. Despite playing a vital role, the RAS can occasionally activate improperly in a number of situations, which can subsequently result in the onset of hypertension. For instance, renal artery stenosis reduces the amount of blood that reaches one or both kidneys. Juxtaglomerular cells will, as a result, detect a drop in blood volume, activating the RAS. Due to inadequate renal perfusion, this may result in an improper rise of the circulating blood volume and arterial tone, and results in high blood pressure. Then, what if the conversion of angiotensin 1 into 2 is stopped? Of course, this improper rise in blood pressure can be avoided. The enzymes that convert angiotensin 1 into 2 are angiotensin-converting enzymes, and the drugs that inhibit the effects of these enzymes are angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, or ACE inhibitors. Angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors effectively lower the mean arterial blood pressure as well as systolic and diastolic blood pressure, both in hypertensive and normotensive patients. Recent guidelines released by the American Heart Association and the European Society of Cardiology both recommend ACE inhibitors as first-line antihypertensive therapy, especially in patients with diabetes mellitus and cardiovascular diseases. ACE inhibitors improve heart failure by decreasing afterload, preload, and systolic wall stress, which results in increased cardiac output without any increase in heart rate. Current clinical practice guidelines advise treating individuals with left ventricular dysfunction or heart failure with ACE inhibitors as soon as possible following an infarction. Also, ACE inhibitors and ARBs are the first-line drugs for managing chronic kidney disease patients. Examples of ACE inhibitors include benazapril, captopril, enalapril or vasotec, fosinopril, lisinopril and ramipril. All of the ACE inhibitors are prescribed orally, except for enalapril, which can be given intravenously. There are various other ACE inhibitors used in clinical practice. You can download the drug dosing chart of ACE inhibitors from the description below. Although ACE inhibitors are used as first line of treatment for hypertension, there are few side effects of this drug should be diagnosed early and treated accordingly. About 1 to 10% of those who are taking ACE inhibitors will develop a dry, non-productive paroxysmal cough, and there is no treatment for the cough. Experimental studies have shown that using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents and intermediate dose aspirin can help with ACE inhibitors induced cough. The most serious side effect of ACE inhibitors is angioedema. It can affect any organ in the body, including the gut, 
but edema of the tongue, glottis, and or larynx, which causes airway obstruction, is the most worrisome. Antihistamines, steroids, and epinephrine are among the available treatment options. In severe situations of airway compromise, endotracheal intubation is also an option. Because there is a relatively significant risk of recurrence, patients who have previously had ACEI-induced angioedema should not be retested with this class of medications. Next, hypotension. Hypotension is a side effect of any blood pressure-lowering drug. People who are susceptible to this side effect include those with severe volume and or sodium depletion, ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular illness, hyponatremia, high-dosage diuretic therapy, renal dialysis, and heart failure with a systolic blood pressure less than 100 mm of mercury. Next, a reversible decline in renal function has been linked to angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors. With the use of ACE inhibitors, those with heart failure who rely on the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone pathway may experience alterations in renal function. Lastly, hyperkalemia could be brought on by ACE inhibitors. People who have a history of renal impairment, diabetes, using potassium-sparing diuretics concurrently, or taking potassium supplements are at risk for this side effect. Now, as we have seen side effects of using ACE inhibitors, let's have a look at few of the contraindications to use this medicine. ACE inhibitors are contraindicated in patients with a history of angioedema or hypersensitivity. ACE inhibitors cannot be given in pregnancy and also, they are not used as a combined therapy with ARBs as it can cause life-threatening hyperkalemia. Due to the medication's effects on the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone pathway, periodic evaluations of electrolytes and renal function are required. The dosage of the medication must be changed or stopped altogether for patients who have rising potassium levels, decreasing GFR, or increasing creatinine, or in short, impaired renal function. The ACE inhibitors work by cutting the chain. In the RAS system, by inhibiting the effect of angiotensin-converting enzymes, and preventing angiotensin-1 from converting into angiotensin-2, whereas there is another class of antihypertensive drugs which inhibit the effect of angiotensin-2 and vasoconstriction by blocking the receptors which angiotensin-2 binds to. These drugs are called angiotensin receptor blockers, or commonly referred to as ARBs. In the next video, we will look into the ARB antihypertensive drugs used in clinical practice along with their mechanism of action and significance. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.